Hello, everybody. Uh, this is our second video for heat transfer on the Mohs heat transfer. Uh, and for those of you who took 211, which is everyone, um, this is just a review. So it's a review of uh, the basic uh, modes of how thermal energy moves from one place to another uh, by the transfer of kinetic energy of its atoms and molecules. Let's see how it works. So we've got three modes, conduction, convection, and radiation. And as we'll see, conduction and convection are pretty closely related to each other. So let's start with conduction. And we talked about this a little bit in the first video, um, that conduction is about those molecules kind of banging into each other and transferring their energy. Um, and conduction causes what's called diffusion of heat. So diffusion means uh, that you're going to move things from higher levels of intensity uh, to lower levels of intensity. So if we talk about, you know, uh, diffusion of a gas, we're saying well, I've got all my oxygen uh, in a room full of, um, you know, a vacuum. I've got it all in a little ball. I let the ball uh, open up. That oxygen is going to diffuse through the room, and in the same way, uh, thermal energy uh, will diffuse through a material. It will move from areas of high intensity uh, to areas of low intensity. Uh, that happens in a couple of ways, actually. I sort of oversimplified it last time. One of those is, uh, is molecular collisions uh, that statistically, that energy is going to tend to transfer from the higher energy molecule to the lower end. Um, in a gas uh, and liquid, we can also talk about molecular movement. So if I think about this as a gas up here, um, if this molecule, high energy molecule, moves from here to here, uh, the tendency is going to cause this to be hotter and this to be colder because this is losing high energy, this is gaining. Vice versa, if this low energy molecule goes from here to here, it's going to tend to increase the average uh, temperature of this area and decreases the average temperature, the average kinetic energy of the upper area. So no matter which way these molecules move, the tendency is going to move for this to cool down and for this to heat up. Uh, and so both of those collisions and molecular movement uh, lead to diffusion, the movement of thermal energy from areas of high intensity uh, to low intensity, high temperature to low temperature. Now, when we think about that happens, what we want to do is come up with what's called a rate equation. We want to know how fast that's going to happen uh, in a given circumstance. So we're going to start from basics here and kind of imagine a conductive material uh, that looks like this tube here. Let's think of this as a metal, say. Uh, and this end of it is held at temperature 1. This end is held at temperature 2, uh, and we wanted to know what our heat flux is. Remember, heat flux is the rate of energy moving through a certain area. So if we think of the cross-sectional area of this pipe, how much thermal energy is moving through that cross-sectional area? Uh, and we would, if we did some experiments, uh, we would see that uh, that flux increased as the cross-sectional area of the pipe got bigger. Uh, it would increase as the temperature difference between T1 and T2 increase, uh, and that would increase inversely with the length of our pipe. In other words, we'd get more heat transfer if T1 and T2 uh, were closer together. Uh, and if we add all of those ideas uh, together up here, all these proportionalities, you can see we got A, delta T, delta x down at the bottom, uh, we can say that this term, if we ignore that k for a second, uh, is proportional to q. And then k is our proportionality constant. Um, and that k is our coefficient uh, of heat conduction. So basically, the meaning of all this, we could do some experiments figure out these things, and we would come up with Fourier's law. Now, uh, when that rate equation, when we start there, all we're doing to turn that into a rate equation is to change that delta x 
um, that we saw previously into a dt dx. So this is, in other words, the, the rate of change of the temperature uh, determines how much um, heat transfer we get. Okay, so this is a flux term. If flux term, we're dividing both sides out by A, right? Because we want to know if I, for whatever pipe size, uh, how much energy is coming through. Um, we, it's, this is per unit area. Uh, this is a heat rate over here um, that tells us on a more absolute sense how much energy is coming uh, through that pipe or in the case of our image here uh, through this uh, rod or column. Okay. K uh, is that coefficient, right? And that's uh, the coefficient of thermal conductivity. Uh, and that is a material characteristic like C, specific heat, uh, that has to do with the arrangement of the molecules, right? So if the structure of the molecules in iron is different than steel, uh, then we can imagine that they're gonna interact with each other in a different way. Uh, and that's gonna determine um, that value K. So this is our rate equation for the heat for heat flux from conduction. Just a little bit a uh, word about some of the material characteristics. So thermal conductivity uh, tells us how quickly uh, that kinetic energy in the molecules moves from areas of high intensity to areas of low intensity. Uh, thermal diffusivity, if we take that key K and divide that by rho and specific heat C, that's going to basically tell us how quickly uh, a material is going to respond to changes in its environment. In other words, K is telling you, oh, there's a bunch of thermal energy moving uh, through this, say, metal. Uh, but if that metal has a really high density, or if it can absorb a lot of energy before it changes temperature very much, uh, then your energy isn't going to diffuse through that material very quickly. Okay, so this tells us how those molecules react. This tells us how much energy essentially it takes to change the temperature of, um, of a particular material. So thermal conductivity and diffusivity uh, similar terms, but how they have slightly different meanings. All right, so there's our conduction rate equation. Um, let's imagine uh, a copper bar uh, that's initially at zero degrees, uh, and we hold one end at 50 degrees uh, and one end at zero. So we're going to imagine at steady state, uh, what is that temperature field going to look like? So in our plot here, um, initially, our temperature is zero everywhere. Um, and then we're going to heat up one end of it at 50 degrees. So you can imagine initially, uh, this end of the bar, this bar is going this way, would be 50 degrees and everything else would be zero. What happens over time? Well, that heat is gonna move from an area of high intensity and it's gonna diffuse into the rest of the bar. So let's imagine we're in that process uh, and the bar is starting to heat up. It's hotter over here, but it's still quite cool over here. That heat hasn't diffused all the way to the left side of the bar. So imagine this section, what's going to happen? Look at your rate equation. What's dt dx? Oh, it's tx, the rate of change of t of x. It's the slope in this plot. Okay, so my slope here is bigger than my slope at b. So what does that mean? Okay, that means my slope is bigger, my material's the same. So my heat flux at A is higher than my heat flux at B, okay? This is heat flux into this section, into this box. This is heat flux out of it. So this is saying, okay, more heat is being 
transferred and diffused into this section of the pipe than is being diffused out of that section. So this part of the pipe is going to start to increase in temperature. Okay, that makes sense, right? We're still, we started with the whole bar at zero and heated up one end. So we would expect the bar to heat up. Uh, and the reason it's heating up here is because we've got more heat flux in than we do out. So if we want this to be steady state, uh, we need to have the same heat flux on both sides of every section in the bar. In other words, the only, this section of the bar will keep the same temperature when the slope at A is the same as the slope at B. Okay, when is that going to happen? Well, it's going to happen when you have a linear plot here, right? If my plot of temperature were a straight line, then I can say at every section, no matter how wide I made the section or narrow, um, my slope on one side would be at the same as the slope on the other, and so I wouldn't be changing temperature anymore. So the final state of this bar is going to be a linear plot from zero at zero to 50 degrees at one meter. All right, so that's the basics of Fourier's Law. One last slide here just to show you what this looks like in 3D. Um, in uh, multiple dimensions, it, it basically looks the same. We're just adding uh, uh, little differential equations uh, in each uh, direction. So uh, like, a, you know, say kinematics, we can deal with this in one um, direction at a time. Uh, so what is this equation? This here, instead of k dt dx, we have a vector pointing in each of the x, y, and z directions. So i, j, and k are our unit vectors. Um, and then the temperature gradient in each direction uh, can be calculated separately uh, in order to find our overall flux. In practice, uh, what that means is uh, that the flux is always going to be perpendicular to an isotherm. Um, and we won't bother to sort of show this mathematically, but that makes sense physically, right? You would expect if the, this area, say, is hotter uh, than this area, and it was, you know, the isotherms were in no, along that sort of curved section, we would expect that the energy would move uh, across those isotherms uh, perpendicular as it moves from the hottest place uh, as quickly as it can uh, to the coldest place. Uh, in cylindrical coordinates, uh, and that's what we have here, it's just a picture of what cylindrical coordinates looks like, uh, our equation looks like this. We will do some cylindrical coordinates questions uh, uh, later, but we're not going to worry too much about those uh, about that right now. Just know that um, we can take Fourier's law in that simplified 1D version uh, and expand it out so that we can deal with more complex geometries. Uh, and that is uh, all we've got on conduction.